Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 1 p.m. session for the Galileo Annual Conference. Uh, at this session, we're going to be learning about Power Notes um, with two speakers. Uh, Jimmy Fleming is the Director of Business Development and Content and Instruction Consultant for Power Notes. Um, he has, uh, for over 30 years, been the composition specialist for a leading college textbook publisher. And his hope at Power Notes is to collaborate with teachers of reading and writing at high schools and colleges, language arts and curriculum developers, directors of first year writing, teachers of writing across the curriculum, graduate students, and writing center and online literacy directors to develop tools in Power Notes and guides to uh, using them that enhance research and writing and teaching those skills with a focus, especially on online critical reading. We also have Kyle Zegarak, the um, business development manager. Uh, he has a background in student services and the admissions side of online education, along with experiences working at early stage technology companies. He received his Bachelor of Science from Grand Valley State University and his Master of Science from Grand Canyon University. Uh, so thank you for being here, uh, Kyle and Jimmy, and please take it away. Thank you, Jeff, for that uh, great introduction. Um, yes, we are excited to join you all today uh, for this session on Power Notes. Um, for many of you in the audience, this may be your first time seeing Power Notes, uh, even learning about uh, Power Notes in general. Um, as uh, Jeff went through our backgrounds and our focus with the company, um, you can sort of see that we, uh, Jimmy and I, carry two different roles. Uh, my focus with Power Notes is on the tool itself and how students could perhaps use the tool to better their learning experiences. Um, as we have started to work with um, higher education institutions, K through 12 districts, um, my colleague Jimmy has taken on the role of working hands-on with departments, faculty, um, and everyone else involved to really explore how Power Notes can be used in the classroom. Um, so we're, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have as we walk through, but just so you know who uh, may be uh, better fit to address those questions. Uh, for our presentation today, I will be walking through the tool, so you'll get to see a firsthand demo of what a, a user would um, experience, and we can also talk through some uh, examples of how Power Notes has also been used in the classroom, um, and that's where we've actually had some, some uh, recent functionalities come from. So uh, once again, thank you for taking the time. Uh, earlier this year, we began this uh, relationship with Galileo. Um, they have secured uh, severely discounted pricing options for um, all uh, higher education and K through 12 um, schools uh, within their community. So we can share information on, on you with that if it's something that you're looking uh, to find more on. Um, and we also want to talk through the uh, differences in our two subscriptions. So Power Notes is a tool that can be used by individuals. So students, faculty, researchers, really anyone looking to be, get more organized. Um, or it can also be used, um, as we've discussed so far, uh, in the classroom setting. And really the main differences between the two are, let me get my uh, second screen here, are, are, are outlined here. So the, the, there's a free version, and the free version, um, everyone can have access to one project. Uh, that uh, project can, there's not really a size limit. It could be used for as big, as little of work as possible. Um, I will touch on the OCR feature as we walk through the tool, just to provide a little context on it. Um, and you also just get base level user support. The premium version um, can be purchased in by, by any individual um, for $5 a month or $50 a year. And then we have the institutional agreements. Um, as I mentioned, Galileo has secured um, severely discounted subscription options. Um, from a user perspective, um, it opens up uh, Power Notes to have really no feature limitations. There's unlimited everything um, and expedited user and technical support. Um, there's a handful of school benefits, some that you, know, you could expect with an account manager and, and training. Really, the the, one of the main benefits is our library proxy integration. So we will um, work with your school's library databases um, and, and have that integration to normalize all of those URLs for your students and faculty. So what that means with Power Notes, as you will see, every time something is saved, which happens automatically within Power Notes, we will normalize those URLs. So whether the students on campus, off campus, is wherever they're saving it, the next time they click on it to go back to that source, it'll bring them directly to it. Um, 
what we found in the past is students often have a difficult time saving URLs. Sometimes they expire or different databases provide different types of, of URLs. We will normalize all of that for students and we can address questions, um, but I think it'll start to make sense as I begin to walk through the tool. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna jump into the tool itself. Get out of here. All right. So I'm inside of my Power Notes account. Uh, uh, Power Notes is project-based. Um, and I think of, of projects as, you know, in, in, in Google you have docs and in Microsoft Word you have diff different documents as well. Within Power Notes, you can have multiple projects that you're working on. Uh, premium, you can have unlimited projects. That free version, you can have one project. Um, starting here, I have the title of the project for today. I pulled up some uh, just generic sources on um, oceanography. Let me make sure I spell that right. So here you can see you can um, have a, a project name, type in descriptions, and so on. The, the next thing that you can do is begin to add it or customize uh, topics. So within Power Notes, every time you start a new project, you'll default to these two generic topics. Um, in many instances, students will do this because they're not sure what's going to be important for their uh, project just yet. Uh, but in some cases, as we will point out later in the discussion, um, instructors can come in and they can assign certain evaluative criteria or topics beforehand so students know what to look for as they get into the text. So I'm going to click done and I'm going to jump into some of these sources uh, that I have opened up here. For today's example, I have EBSCO. Uh, a PDF from JSTOR and something from the open web. So this page you're looking at here is part of the Power Notes web application. The second part of Power Notes, which is actually probably the, the most used, is our browser extension. Uh, the, the browser extension will work on uh, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge. Uh, we have plans to support Safari sometime early this fall. Um, and we also have our mobile application, which is almost here as well. It's currently in beta testing and it's just about finalized as well. So think as we're going through this, a majority of these features will also be able to uh, work on a mobile device. But the, the web app here, this page and the browser extension are synced together uh, with the browser extension being the uh, features that will help capture information, grab information from, from across any uh, digital source and pull them into your Power Notes projects. Um, so I'm jumping into uh, here in EBSCO. I have this uh, 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 journal pulled up. Um, as I mentioned, I, uh, I have different things on oceanography, just as an example. So here, um, when I have my browser extension activated, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, there's a yellow P. And in the bottom right-hand corner of this page, we have this icon here. So this icon means that Power Notes is activated. Um, and you can also click on this, which will open up what we call the sidebar. So this part of Power Notes is designed to provide students with a centralized and consistent location to, to capture information, to organize it, to annotate it. Um, and all, uh, allow the student to do all, the, all of those things without having to leave the source. Um, I'm sure everyone here has had experiences, uh, you know, copy and pasting information, using Word documents that often become, become cluttered. We want to get out in front of that and facilitate progressive organization, um, allow students to really understand what they're capturing, why it's important, where it's going to go within their project, what project it's going to go into, um, and give them an interface that can facilitate all of that. Um, so when I have the uh, uh, sidebar open, or it, it can, this can actually work with a sidebar closed as well. Um, we're all about minimizing digital distractions. Um, all I have to do to save information is highlight. So if I wanted to highlight something here, when I make a highlight, this little box will pop up and this will show um, just a, uh, it'll mirror what's in the sidebar. So I have the title of the project that I'm in. I have those two topics. Once again, these can, you can customize these, you can add to them over time. Uh, for, for now, we have background and new topic. So for, for the example, I can put this in the back background so I can begin to organize it as soon as I make that highlight. And then from there, it'll prompt an annotation field. So here I can take notes, I can summarize, um, there is no text limit to this box. I can write as much or as little as I'd like in here. Uh, we just want to 
help facilitate annotation, which we know is, is uh, key with uh, reading, specifically in the digital learning environment, but it's often difficult to do. You, right, you have to copy and paste something, put it in a Word document, uh, type next to it, and hope that that information stays together. With Power Notes, we're going to pair it all together automatically, and it's, it's, it, it, it cannot be separated inside of Power Notes. So after you've made the highlight, you've annotated, um, you can click enter or this green check and just keep reading. You can see over here in the sidebar, it'll sync over. That, that highlight is in quotations, so you know it's not yours. Right above it uh, is, our, is the annotation or any notes that you've taken. So you can always come back in and edit this field. And then below it is the URL that we're gonna capture. And once again, um, this will be the, the permalink, or if it's an uh, open web or another academic database, part of our uh, integration process is normalizing these, those, those URLs. So you'll always have a link back to where it came from. Um, and once again, that, that proxy integration is part of our um, premium subscription service. So from there, you can just keep reading. You can highlight, organize, annotate if you'd like, and it'll all stay neatly uh, uh, bundled here together. We refer to these as digital note cards. Um, in the future, if anyone has a, ch a chance to listen to a session with our founder and CEO, Wilson Sue, uh, you'll get the understanding that um, the note cards are an ode to the uh, pre-digital way of conducting research and writing, transcribing from physical um, textbooks onto physical note cards, and then using that as an interface to reorganize and repurpose information. So we wanted to bring that back here within Power Notes, and it plays a key role um, in, in the features of the tool. Um, I'm going to pause for a second there. Um, Jimmy, did, did you want to jump in and, and touch on any of the uh, of these uh, capturing and organizing and annotation features before I jump over to some other features within Power Notes? Well, mostly, thank you, Kyle. Mostly, I just want to reinforce uh, one of the moments here that uh, might be very evident to the language arts teachers in the room. Um, what strikes me, what struck me when I first viewed Power Notes is how powerful the, uh, the anchoring moment is when students highlight something and a note card pops up. They have their first opportunity to engage with the text. And this is a place where some writing instruction might take place, some rhetorical instruction might be delivered. In other words, students can begin to take notes, just simply ask questions back to the text, or they might begin to learn to practice uh, such rhetorical skills as paraphrasing or summary, or even the first thoughts that might take shape in, a, in an analysis uh, moment. So not only is all of the work being captured in front of the student, so there's no distractions moving from this text to a copy and paste mode over into another document, but he's also engaged very directly with the text at this moment. Um, and because the student can come back to each note card and change what she's entered here as her notes, uh, that rhetorical emphasis gets reinforced throughout the use of power notes. So um, not only is this an, you know, a reading tool being developed right off the bat, but we're de developing critical reading skills very early on. Great, thank you, Jimmy. So uh, over here in the sidebar, there are a few things I'd like to point out. Uh, first, uh, the ability to customize these topics that we have. So you know, we started with these two generic topics. Maybe at this point, the student starts to understand what might be important for their research that they're conducting. So you can easily change topic names. So maybe change this to environmental impact. Um, you can also easily add topics as you start or as you're reading on the fly. So I can switch over here. Um, let me pull up this uh, PDF from uh, JSTOR um, just to show you that it works exactly the same. Um, Power Notes will actually work across all academic databases, um, almost all ebook platforms. If there are some that we do not work on, it typically takes us a few days to work out the kinks. Um, but with that being said, it's, it's almost all of them. Um, anything that can be opened up in the browser. So like a PDF that can be opened up in the browser. Um, if it's saved to your computer, we can show you how to, we actually have a, a blog on how to open it up on your, in your browser in all websites as well. Um, so here, um, uh, if I wanted to say, create a new topic, all I would need to do is follow that same highlighting uh, workflow, but instead of putting it into background or new or environmental impact, there's a plus icon here. So I can click add topic, create this new topic. I'll call this one ecosystems. You click save. So it'll automatically add that topic. It'll color coordinate it. I can put that highlight in there and it'll, it'll just start that workflow over again. 
and so on. Every time I highlight, it'll now be there. So you can start to add to that organizational structure um, as you're working through. Um, you can also add your own thoughts. So I'm, I'm over here in the sidebar next to each topic. There are, um, there's an icon that's a, a notepad. And when you click on it, it says add freeform note and it'll open up your own field. So up until now, these three annotations are associated with the, with the quotes that they're paired with and a link to um, the source. That freeform note provides the student with their own field to begin writing or ask questions, or if it's an interview quote they wanna put in or anything along the line, we see students using this field in many different ways and we're continuing to learn how it's being used. We just wanna provide a place to write without having them have to leave the source. So you can do it all within here as you're reading, just click add that button and you can put your own thoughts, anything you want in here, maybe an interview quote and so on. And once again, that's located at each section. So you can start to add your notes into um, each different topic. So you know what it's supposed to be associated with. Um, there is no limit to the quotes that you can put into each section or each topic as well. So you can keep highlighting, you can keep adding things um, and so on. Sometimes these PDFs, as we all know, are difficult to highlight on. Um, one thing that's unique about PDF specifically, um, this one uh, has that text layer so we can highlight on it. <clears throat> and this is a, a key feature for, for librarians. And it was actually one of the most requested tickets that we received from a, te a technical perspective when we first launched the first version of Power Notes. Um, and that was when students open up something in the browser that they could not highlight on. And that was not that's nothing to do with Power Notes, but what we want to do was help improve the accessibility of those documents. So when a um, something's opened up and it does not have that text layer, right? It was scanned. Um, maybe it was a picture of something. It just there, there's no text layer. Uh, Power Notes will recognize that. And in the upper right hand corner of, of the sidebar, a red drop down menu will, will appear, and it'll say that this document's not compatible. Please process. And when you click pre please process, we will OCR that um, document on our servers. We will uh, provide you with a download option. You click download and you can save that OCR uh, PDF to your computer. And you can even use that in the future uh, for, for screen readers. Um, it makes that document accessible. Um, we have a great blog post on that on our, um, on our blog, blog.powernotes.com. It actually shows a video of how it works. Typically it takes between 15 seconds to sometimes about a minute, depending on how robust the document is. Um, but it's, it's, it's really unique, it's very helpful, and it, um, it helps address that issue of that a lot of us have, have experienced, whether as a, a student in the digital age, or even working with students where they find a great source, they open it up, but they can't highlight on it. In many instances, those documents are skipped over, which is unfortunate and you know, it's probably going to hurt the student down the road. We don't want that to happen. So we'll automatically process those for students, make them accessible and help them be able to capture information from them and save them uh, for future use as well. Thank you for putting that in the chat, Jimmy. Um, also, what we have is the ability to capture images. So along with, you know, uh, capturing text, putting your own thoughts in here, Power Notes has uh, a, an image capturing uh, function and we can do it in two different ways. So one way is a screenshot. So for, for instance, if I wanted to take a picture of this uh, nuclear blast here, just to emphasize um, uh, something that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to argue in my paper or if it's a, for a study guide I'm, I'm building, I wanna save this image, I can go take a screenshot. I can drag and drop what I wanna save and it'll start that same process. So I can organize this image. So I wanna put this say in environmental impact. Here's the image that I've saved. We have an annotation field if I wanna write about this. And you can see it'll save a thumbnail of that here. And I can always click on that, open it back up if I wanted to take a look at it again. And of course, we're gonna capture that, that same URL as we would if it was text. Uh, jumping over to now the open web. So something in the Atlantic. Uh, Power Notes will work exactly the same. 
Um, just as with you know, highlighting and saving information from different sources, the open web is typically the easiest, um, but uh, you know, we want to improve that with PDFs and databases as well. But here in the, um, in the Atlantic, if I wanted to save this image, for instance, um, instead of uh, screenshotting, which I could do here, but I can also just right click. So instead of having to save it or copy it, we have a save image to Power Notes option. So I can save it, it'll grab that photo. Once again, I can take my notes on it if I'm, if I'm gonna write something about this and I can organize it accordingly. Um, it, the highlighting features will all work exactly the same here. It's actually not too exciting, um, but if I wanted to highlight something here, come here, maybe I wanna add a new topic. Can't even type today. So once again, it'll color coordinate it, um, create that new topic for you and so on. All of these um, topics, as you can see, are color coordinated. The text will appear in the highlight matching the appropriate color. Uh, sometimes in PDFs or academic databases, the colors are a little faint just depending on what the document's like. Here in the open web, you can see it's very clear. Um, whatever color you put in, it'll highlight in that. And you can actually change that as well. Um, you can default it to all yellow highlights if you would prefer that. And we even have a contrast um, uh, function to help with accessibility as well. Um, so I'm gonna pause there to see if there are any questions. It looks like we just have some, some thumbs up in the chat given uh, some kudos saying that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so Along with, uh, sorry, distracted by a, a question in the, in the chat. Um, yes, uh, Jamie, we get that, uh, uh, comp that, 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 that comment very frequently during these types of presentations showing the uh, basic functions of the tool. Uh, so along with being able to capture text and images and add our own thoughts, uh, you can also bookmark entire sources. So of course you can just save something uh, via you know, a, a highlight and you'll always have that link back to the source, but perhaps you are assigned um, a number of readings and you just don't have time yet to, to go in and start making highlights. So what you can do is bookmark. So next to that screenshot uh, button at the top, there's a red add bookmark. Uh, I'm over here in the top of the sidebar. So if I came across this and I, and I thought this was a great source, but I don't have time to read it, I can click add bookmark. What it'll do is it'll create a brand new topic at the top of your sidebar called bookmarks. Here's a link to it and it'll provide a notes field. So you can write why it's gonna be important for you. Uh, this is more of an intentional bookmark because it's saved directly inside of your topics. So in the top of the sidebar here, this is where if you would have premium accounts, um, you can have a drop down menu and switch back and forth between all of the projects that you're working on. So if you were working on a number of things and you thought this would be great for another class, um, you can switch between that project, bookmark it and come right back. Um, these bookmarks are also great because along with all of this information, you'll be able to move all of it around. You'll be able to repurpose this, drag and drop, move it all in that project outline uh, uh, page, which we started on for this presentation. All right, I'm gonna pause there again and pass it over to Jimmy to see if there's anything that I have missed or that you would uh, think is valuable worth adding at this time. Thank you, Kyle. At this point, I'd say no, really. Um, I was very engaged in the chat room with a lot of great commentary back and forth. Um, so as much as anything else, I would say here that the um, rhetorical moments in, inside Power Notes are many, and one of the things that will become evident uh, as you go through here are the, and Kyle pointed out, the free phone note cards uh, have an opportunity for students to add also reflective uh, comments. That's that's very, very common in, in um, higher ed uh, first year writing sequences. They ask the students to reflect on their processes, and so that can happen with the free form note cards. I'd also point out that in the moment when we jump to the open website of Power Notes, that the organizing functions um, of Power Notes become pronounced. Great, thank you, Jimmy. Um, so 
one last thing worth mentioning here before I transition out to the uh, project outline page of Power Notes. Uh, you can easily filter through what you're seeing here. So as you can imagine, these projects get quite big. Um, so you can click show all, you can uh, uh, look at only bookmarks uh, and so on. Um, what you can also do here is ask for help. So we have uh, put our feedback or our support channel directly in the tool to where if something happens where, you know, maybe a, a page is not working or you think something should, should happen a certain way and it's just not, we encourage all users, students, faculty, anyone using Power Notes to just click this feedback button here. It's, it's sort of hidden, but when you, when you hover over this red icon, click feedback, what it'll do is it'll grab the URL that you are in. Um, we know your email address because it's associated with your account and you just type in your question here. So you, so you don't have to find an email address for us. From a user perspective, you just say, this is not working, please help. And it goes right to our channel. Our um, uh, support team takes a look at it. Even Jimmy and I have access to that. So if we recognize a name in there, we can say, you know what? I know what, what Jimmy or Kyle is looking at. I can, I can contact, contact them directly to help them. But uh, we wanted to help provide support and make it easy for especially students who may be struggling to just give them that uh, seamless channel right there. What's also great about Power Notes is easily turning it on and off. So as you can imagine, you don't always wanna have this sidebar here, um, especially having this little box pop up when you make a highlight. So all you need to do to turn it off is go to this um, uh, extension menu and click disable and everything goes away. So that highlighting feature does not happen anymore. Um, you can use the same old co copy and paste function if that's what you're using it for. But if you're just not doing schoolwork, you just turn it off. And then when you're ready to go, get back to work, you go to the extension menu, you turn it on, um, and everything will reappear. All those highlights that you had on this page, all the colors, sidebar, and so on. And then of course, if you need to switch to a project, you come here and, and do that there. So switching to now the project outline page, you come here, and you can either just go to powernotes.com. If you click on this yellow P, that'll bring you to your homepage. Uh, but this uh, link here will bring you to uh, that same project you're working on, but put everything in an outline for you. So this is all saved in the cloud. So you can you know, have that browser extension on one computer, open it up on another. You can open up this uh, on a mobile device uh, and really anything uh, that you wanna access, it's all saved in the cloud. So as you can see here, it's in the same order that it was in the sidebar, um, same format of these note cards, everything is, is separated um, and paired together uh, from where it came from. But this, this interface is designed to reorganize. So what, I, what we've designed this for is helping students move things around without having to copy and paste it and without having to risk losing a URL, an annotation. Um, here you can just drag and drop this information. So you can move it up, move it down. You can move things across topics. If you thought something was important in a certain area, but you need to move it, you can easily do that. You can of course add, still add your own writing in here. Uh, when we see examples from students, this is typically where they start to add more of their own writing um, and so on. And those, you, of course, you can move around as well. If you realize that this bookmark, perhaps this entire source, you would like to move it into a topic, you can and do that uh, as so. What you can also do is move things longer distances. Um, so this is great for if this was perhaps a small piece of a larger project and you wanted to take an individual note card and move it to somewhere else within this assignment or send it out to an, a different uh, a project entirely. So you can do that and not only to a different project but a specific, a specific topic within that project and you can also copy it. So it'll stay here and then go out wherever else you wanna send it to. You can also do that with entire topics. So if you wanted to send this out, um, a great example that we see in some instances for group projects, um, each student has their own section that they're working on and then they have a shared centralized project that is like their final product. They just come here and click, I'm gonna move this out to whatever other project that I'm working on, or I can copy it to, to some other project and so on. This is also where um, I, I started on this page, but you can easily come in and do like a high level reorg of these topics. So you can drag and drop, 
move this information around. Um, some things that students will do is they will use the interface to create these sort of preliminary topics, do research, and then come in perhaps and um, add a more rhetorical outline underneath it. And I'm going to pass this to Jimmy to give a, just a quick uh, explanation of, of um, how this came to us. It was actually uh, a recommendation from a group of students and how it could potentially be used. Thank you, Kyle. Yep. Uh, yeah, at this at this place, what what what, happened, what we discovered from I think it was students at the University of Southern California was the idea of being able to add a a writing outline or a writing hierarchy underneath or on top of the current thematically organized um, organization. So what the students were at were tasked with doing is is converting their reading and the research they had done online. Uh, to a certain format for their writing assignment. Now, this is also, I'm going to segue a little bit, and it's also the place where students who are involved in upper division writing courses that might have some very, very genre specific um, uh, format issues. So they can come to the research project that they've done and then in institute, as Kyle just showed you with this brief introduction here, the Roman numerals one, two, and three, the format that's going to be asked for for that assignment. And so at this stage, what we've done is we've added a um, outline underneath the existing topical outline. Um, if this is what we're going to work with, Kyle would click done and we move back out to the uh, to the web page, um, outline page, and you can see in the right side, the um, second uh, outline organization is under the topical outline. And now just by the, uh, the moving of the note cards, Kyle can start moving stuff into its proper place as it transitions from the topical outline to a writing outline. We call it outline transformation. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, this is just a short example, but uh, you know, we we love hearing feedback of of, of how the interface is used, um, and that's something that we we got very excited about. About two years ago, we found out that students were sort of repurposing their outlines and uh, building multiple ones within this this page here. Um, but as you as everyone in in the audience knows, students are very resourceful, and they'll find the best ways to use tools. Um, so uh, once again, everything here is. You, you can reorganize, you can customize over here on the right-hand side if you want to filter things, if you want to just see a certain topic, if you want to uh, take away all the um, URLs just to uh, uh, provide a, a, a cleaner page to look at and read, you can do all of that here. Um, what you can also do is download this. So what we wanted to do, once again, I, I, I mentioned early on um, our founder, Wilson Sue, and the uh, story that he tells about how he thought of Power Notes. And it was really those, those uh, steps and processes that need to take place when you're capturing information, organizing it, and you're working towards either a research project, some type of paper that you're writing, or even a, even a study guide. Those small steps that take place are very difficult to do in the digital learning environment. They often require that copy and paste, um, multiple documents. So what we wanted to do was help facilitate those steps to help students get closer to that final product, study guide, research paper, whatever it may be. Um, so after you have collected the information, you've reorganized it, you've moved things around, you've added in your own writing, you can then send everything out to a Word document, which is that standard format that students are typically more comfortable with. So here at the very top, we have this export option. So you click export, you can send it out to a Word document. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and this will work with Word or, uh, or Google Docs. So here you have the title of the project. If you had description, it would be underneath there. Um, each of your topics will be in bold. Um, each of the uh, uh, links will be uh, underneath there directly as well. And then any uh, annotations or your own thoughts will be in there as well. Plenty of white space to begin writing. And one thing that I'm actually gonna go back real quickly on and show are, um, are the, our citation features, which would populate here as well, if you had captured the citations for, for all of these quotes. Um, teachers have, 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 have shown to, uh, to appreciate this export because it provides a consistent um, uh, output. So they're getting something that's, that's consistent and Power Notes is just facilitating it. It's not doing any of the work for the students, but it's helping provide a guided workflow towards a, um, final product. And real quickly, I'm going to jump back into these sources to point out some of these citation features. 
Uh, this is typically where we actually get most of our questions. Um, and we have some exciting things coming um, that's towards the end of this summer on citations. So I'm going to jump back quickly into the sources. So when a student makes a highlight or student user, I sometimes use those terms interchangeably, um, we of course are always going to capture the URL. So the students can never lose track of where something came from because it'll also always be paired together with that highlight. What we will also capture um, here in the open web, if you click on confirm citation, we'll grab the uh, uh, citation fields or the information that students need to build a citation. So title, date published, and so on. We will grab that from the website's metadata just at the point of highlight. The students can then go in and click confirm citation. They can review these fields, make sure that they're accurate. Um, if something's missing, they can type it in. Um, we even have a short disclaimer here saying, you know, this is not always accurate. It's just pulled from, from the website. Um, please double check it. You can apply it to everything on this page and click save to sources. Um, I would encourage those uh, interested in, in, in Power Notes, but perhaps this is not a, a good time to evaluate new tools. Towards the end of the summer, early fall, we will have a new uh, interface feature here that is designed to help evaluate sources. Uh, it's something that we're working on with uh, several of our partner faculty, um, and we're excited to, to, to launch, um, but they will populate here and we'll have more to come on that. Um, so, but as of now, this, this is all live. This is how it looks. You click save the sources. And what's cool about it, sp specifically for those, you know, working on a number of projects. I was an online graduate student not too long ago. I know how uh, sometimes scatterbrained students can be. Um, when you highlight something, what will happen is um, those fields will once again remain there. You click save the sources. And then in the sidebar, you will see, I can expand it out those fields have now shaded to dark gray. So that's a visual indicator that you have what you need to build the citation. It's all paired with this information here. So that's not a step that students should are, are taking towards the end of their assignment, which through our surveys we found is when they do most of their, uh, you know, uh, 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 bibliographies and they're, they're trying to find out where things came from. Here, they can just say, all right, I have this, I'm good to go. I did it initially, it'll be with me throughout the end. Now, we, we currently do things a little bit differently um, going back here to JSTOR um, and across all academic databases because these sources do not provide that same metadata. However, what they do provide are um, already built citations. So they have citation generators, which we know sometimes are not always accurate. So what we currently do is provide a field where students can place these. So here I had, um, I, I made this highlight. If I click confirm citation, what we currently have is a field here where the user can go back in, they can uh, grab the uh, citations that are provided to them. You know, say click APA, for example, go back in, pop it in there. They can edit this to make sure that it's right and click save to sources. And then anything pulled from this page will have, um, you, you, can, you can apply it to all. So it'll, it'll retroactively apply it to everything that was saved on this page or you can just say, no, this is just for this one highlight or just for this one image I'm saving. You can, you can customize what that uh, citation is associated with. Um, one thing that we are working on, um, and I mentioned the citation enhancements coming, is a further integration with these databases. Uh, what we want to do is um, provide just a drop-down menu where uh, the, the student can just you know, click a drop-down menu, select APA, MLA, whatever they're using, and it'll populate here uh, because we know that copy and pasting, that's not necessarily part of the learning process. It's typically a step that just adds more time. Um, we have sort of taken cautious steps in building citation features because we get mixed reviews on what librarians, um, you know, what they want those things to look like. Some want them auto-generated, some want them not auto-generated. So um, we've actually lagged behind on some citation specific things. But the main thing that we want to do is one, ensure students always know where something came from and help make capturing citation information and pairing it with the relevant information. We want to make that easier. Um, but once again, we have some exciting things coming uh, towards the end of the summer in this uh, space. All righty. 
So we're going to go back to here to our project outline page. Once again, move things around, reorganize this information, delete this information, add your own writing, export it out. Um, along with sending things out to Word documents, uh, we've actually started to add uh, spreadsheet exports. And this is this is what was sort of our first step in helping teachers um, facilitate different assignments. And what uh, the uh, spreadsheet exports are or help students do is put this information in, in, in a different format. Uh, sometimes a linear outline is not the best way to read information and analyze information. So one of the first exports we built, I have an example of it pulled up. Um, and what it'll do is it'll put the topics. So here, environmental impact background, it'll put those in a um, uh, uh, axis and it'll put all the sources in another. And then anything that you have captured will just populate in the appropriate cell. So the example I have pulled up, I'm going to ask my colleague Jimmy to um, provide a uh, review of it. Is, is actually not it doesn't have anything to do with this example from today. Um, it's uh, something that we we've worked on with uh, one of our partner schools, um, but I think you'll get an idea of of um, what it's um, you know different options with th this spreadsheet. So this one I'm going to show you as an example of is the first one here, but once again it's uh, just a generic example. Jimmy, thanks, Kyle. Um, yep. Yeah, if this were the uh, if this were drawn from the oceanography project, what you would see across row one would be all of the topics that that Kyle had: environmental impact, etc. And down the first column would be the articles that he's just been uh, exploring. In this case, what's happened is uh, the writing program at the University of Pennsylvania were asking their students to do more of an evaluative um, exercise. They were building towards the idea of students learning how to write a literature review. Uh, which was a component of first year writing, but it's integral to a lot of their upper division writing courses. In other words, you can students are taught the literature review as an outcome very early on, and then it's reinforced. Now, this particular format, this particular uh, example, has across the first row evaluated criteria. These are not from UPenn, but the concept is there. This is these are these are uh, criteria that students would be using in a rhetorical analysis assignment. So by using these criteria, they're looking at their sources and they're trying to judge the accuracy, validity, usefulness. Uh, of the source material. So across the first row are six evaluated criteria. Down the left column, column A, are the four essays that we're looking at. Um, what Penn asked their students to do was to go to the end of the first row and add a column called analysis. So in this cell, H1, the students were tasked with looking across the, uh, uh, the, 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 row, the row two for all of the entries that they had made as the highlights and quotation marks. And not all examples here have notes taken on them, but if they did have notes taken on them, they'd be, it'd be, it'd be set aside. So then the student in H1 is going to put in her comments about the analysis of that particular essay using these six evaluated criteria. The introduced the students to the difference between analysis and summary. Penn goes to the bottom, instructs her students to go to the bottom row and add this row called synthesis. So now students are tasked with looking up and down each column. So this is for a set of each criteria across four different essays in this example, and then making their evaluative judgments here about how each uh, of those articles stood up and reflected the idea of relevance, authority, accuracy, currency, et cetera. In a nutshell, students got a visual demonstration, a visual representation of the difference between synthesis and, and analysis. And that's a, that's a really difficult rhetorical concept to teach and to learn. So this was a, um, a tool to help them see it very visually. And this also then can be used as the uh, underpinning of their literature review. Uh, once again, that's an assignment that's asked for a lot of upper division writing uh, courses in higher ed. But because of their, 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 they asked us if we could create this template for them, and we did. Uh, one of the other drop downs that Kyle showed you a moment ago is exactly this same material, but the X and Y axes are reversed. And that's simply reflecting the uh, a request from a graduate program where they teach the literature review and they, the format they use in that particular example is um, just reversed. The X, Y axes here are reversed. And the other two examples in that drop down menu are from our law partners who've asked us for a very different um, uh, way to present the material. Uh, the this, this source report is a lot about the citation information and the research log is actually time stamped so that they can actually teach the process of doing research. Whereas uh, in the concept in, in, in higher ed is, is called lateral reading. So the students find a source and that source led to another source. So what is your chronological template for that or timeline for that? That's what those two, but those are more common for law, law schools than, than high schools or undergrad. Yep. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, 
what we have found was as we started to build these uh, different exports uh, based on the feedback from our uh, partner teachers is that uh, spreadsheets have been, are, are being used <clears throat> in K through 12 teaching and in, in higher ed teaching. And uh, we really value that feedback because we, you know, we are not the teachers. We are the ones helping build tools, um, helping understand how students are learning and helping provide teachers with different um, features to facilitate that. Um, so if you have something in mind, we would be happy to discuss it with you. Um, even recently, uh, in, in the past few months, we've been speaking with um, teachers in the sciences about lab reports and other options as well with this uh, spreadsheet export. So if you can think of something, let us know. Um, also here um, at the very top, we have our sharing feature. So what's great about Power Notes is you can collaborate on all of this work that, that you have done, and you can do so at any stage. So think of if this was a student um, and you as the teacher wanted to uh, maybe monitor and, and, and see what they were doing throughout their in, in entire project, you can ask them to share with you from the, from the very beginning. And you can see you know, where they're going to work. Uh, you can see what they're capturing. Um, and we actually have some different um, sorting features that are great for this sharing function here. And sorting can be done from the original user or the person that is, that is being shared with. So I'm actually going to go to uh, quickly here, um, I'm looking at it at the time, um, to show just a short example of, of what this could look like. Um, I'm going to show uh, with another project uh, that I've worked on over time to show um, what those sorts could look like. It just provides a um, uh, better example. So here I have a project that I use just for examples. Um, I've added a lot of work to it over time. And if I want to click share, the first thing that I can see on the right hand side are the people I've already shared it with. Um, you can see their permissions. So you can, you can either assign someone as, uh, as an editor or as a commenter. Editors can do everything that the um, original uh, project uh, a starter can do. The commenter can only provide feedback and sort through the information. So my example uh, account I've actually pulled up, I'm going to show you in a moment, is Professor Smith here. As of now, they are just a commenter. If you wanted to share with someone new, you just type in their email address um, and you can share it with them. They will receive an email notification and a, no a notification inside of Power Notes, letting them know something is shared with them. So the example of that is here. So this is my um, Professor Smith fake account. I have, I have it opened up in an incognito window for today's example. Um, and you can see at the top, when it was shared with you, who it was shared by, and your permissions. So as a commenter, I can uh, download it so I can take a snapshot in time. I can sort through it, and I'll show you that in a moment, and I can comment. So commenting um, was something that uh, we wanted to build and we wanted to help uh, teachers provide early feedback, help librarians go in for um, research and instruction. It's been great over the past year and a half for remote research instruction. Um, so what you can do is send this with someone. They can come in and click add a comment. It'll open up uh, a discussion field underneath that specific section. And you can have these conversations on this little, a, a small piece of, of work in this project, or you can do comment or uh, project level comments. So you can you know, give feedback on the entire project or on specific sections. So this will send over in real time. I can quickly switch back over to the student view. So you can see there's an uh, orange dot. I have a new comment. And you can see what the professor said. And you can have these uh, conversations back and forth in real time or asynchronously. It was built for both. So comments can be, can be provided once again on any individual note card or the entire uh, project. But what you can also do is sort through this information. So instead of having to comb through this entire outline, if you wanted to take a look at, for example, each date that the student did work, you can come over here and click sort by date. These sorts are all local. So a teacher can look at um, this, this outline, they can sort by date and it'll not change what the student is looking at if they are in the project at the same time, it's only local to your computer. And you can see in chronological order when all the work was completed whether it was outside research pulled in or it, it was your own writing. And you can click collapse all if you wanna see a high level overview. Every single date I've, I've done work in this project is, is documented here. I can dive into specific dates. 
So you can see, okay, did the student do all this work just last night? Have they been working on it over time? And so on. You can also sort by source. So you can see where the student's going for work. Um, have they, uh, you know, are they using uh, valid sources and so on. You can dive into specific sources. This sort will only uh, show, of course, outside research. It will not show the student's writing. But you can still see the annotations if, if, if they had one with um, an outside quote. And if this was a collaborative project, you can sort by editor. So this is great because it'll not just, you know, typically with group projects, uh, students will submit things by section. Each student is responsible for a, a section or two. This will show what student did what work. Um, so you can see, okay, this uh, Kyle did all this work here. This person only did, did, did one piece of work and two pieces of work. The number uh, is either an outside uh, quote pulled in or a chunk of writing. Going back to sorting by topic, which is the outline uh, default sort, you can even hover over each note card and there uh, is, a, is the editor will be in the bottom left-hand corner as well. We have actually just launched a brand new feature. Um, I don't know if we'll have time to cover it today. Uh, perhaps it's something that if you're interested in Power Notes and you're curious about other things that we can do, uh, this is something we're very excited about. Um, if you have uh, access to a Power Notes account right now, if you are at a school that is a, uh, a partner of ours, you will not see this button here because it has to be activated on our end. Um, and I'm gonna let Jimmy provide just a little teaser on what this is um, because it's brand new and we're actually still working out what to call it, um, how to refer to it. Um, but uh, Jimmy has worked more closely with our faculty partners that have helped us design this feature. Jimmy. Thank you, Kyle. I'll try to do this very quickly uh, and in something of an abstract way, but we were uh, engaged with faculty and teachers who teach and reward and want to be able to look at their student engagement. They want to be able to measure things like time on task, how long a student was engaged with the text, where the where the reading took place, where the outlining took place, and how long it took students to engage in that way. Now, part of it was it was um, uh, a request generated by the interest in labor-based grading or contract grading, where whereby grades are are, are made as a as a round of negotiating um, between student and teacher, and also where the uh, reward is for the student's effort as much as it is for the outcome. So labor-based grading is the, the underpinning of this. In that conversation, it became uh, apparent that we could, in fact, track some of the student engagement. So the tools we're calling them tools of engagement, tools of um, uh, measuring time on tasks, things like that sort, rather than we call them assessment tools too, but that also has some other, some other context in, in out of meaning, um, out of context meaning. We want to be careful to avoid that. But the, the most important thing to understand here is that that button will not be activated except at the request of the school or program. And we're not at the point yet where we can activate it for only one teacher and program, but we're working towards that. That is one of our goals. Uh, it also, once activated, if, if Kyle were to click on that button, uh, the student would get a, uh, a, a, a pop-up notice that would tell her that we're actually just going to track her time on task, engagement, uh, measurements, et cetera, and that the, the measurement tools will be turned on for this project only. That's very important because we want the students to know that whatever she's doing outside this task, this assignment, we're not going to be watching or monitoring or collecting information. Um, so, uh, and at some point we're actually gonna put this button sort of reverse the, the, the uh, origin of it. In other words, make it the student who's the one that asked the instructor to engage uh, with the project so that the sort of elements of engagement are gonna be in the hands of the student first and foremost. That button that Kyle activated to hit this drop down will also then turn to green and it becomes kind of a timestamp. It will, it will start monitoring, uh, you know, uh, engagement. The, the number will start reflecting how much time the student has been involved in this task. There we go. Um, and this is very uh, rudimentary at this stage. We're not sure exactly what it's going to look like, but we will be building towards a dashboard so we can share this information with both student and instructor. Thank you, Jimmy. As I mentioned early on, um, for today's presentation, we wanted to cover the full scope of what Power Notes can do. Uh, whether it's an individual student, um, a researcher, or even some of our partner schools, there's some aspects of the tool that, that they, don't, they don't use, they don't care about because they wanna use it for something else. 
Um, if something has caught your attention, if you have questions on a specific feature, please let us know. Um, but as I mentioned, we covered a lot, uh, taking up almost our full hour today. Um, and we, we, we wanted to do that to sort of tease at everything that Power Notes can do. But if you have questions, if you have comments, if, if you want to take a, a closer look at just a certain aspect, perhaps it's just the, that, that browser extension and helping students capture and track information, uh, please let us know. Um, I'm going to pull up our, um, our contact information here. Feel free to write us if you think that um, those at your school would be interested in uh, taking a closer look at the tool. We can do uh, a full demo like this. We can talk about specific features. We can answer your questions. Um, come to us with ideas. We can help brainstorm on how it could be used on your campus, whether it's used just individually by students or in, in, a, in, a, in a classroom setting as well. Um, but we want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us. Um, if there are any last minute questions, we can uh, stick around for a few more minutes. And uh, thank you to the Galileo team. And we hope everyone um, enjoys the remainder of the conference. Thank you, Kyle and Jimmy, for the demo and the presentation. Uh, be sure, uh, everyone, to check the chat because the email addresses are in there at kyle at powernotes.com and jimmy, .power, jimmy at powernotes.com to copy. Um, Lucy says there's a link to PowerNotes in the tools area of your Galileo portal, too. All right, uh, I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you all for being here and enjoy the rest of the conference. And thank you, Galileo. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, everyone.